Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are keeping fans waiting for a royal baby announcement, but their upcoming tour could mean the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will wait a little longer to start a family. Bookies slash the outs on Harry and Meghan's first child being born next year to 1-4 from 1-3 last week. But with Meghan Markle visiting Zika-infected Tonga and Fiji as part of her first official overseas tour with Harry in October it is unlikely the Duchess will be planning to get pregnant. And this is because health officials have advised women visiting areas plagued by the highly infectious virus to wait at least six months before trying to conceive. This means the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's visit to Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific Islands of Fiji and Tonga will mean they could have to wait until almost a year into their marriage before attempting to start a family. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, confirms Zika has been reported in Tonga. It added the only real danger was to those who are pregnant. The CDC stated, Zika virus has been reported in Tonga. Public health officials have reported that mosquitoes in Tonga are infected with Zika and spreading it to people. Many people infected with Zika virus do not get sick or only have mild symptoms. However, infection during pregnancy can cause severe birth defects. Because there is no vaccine or medicine for Zika, travelers should take steps to prevent getting Zika during travel. They should also take steps to prevent spreading it when they return home. Meanwhile, the International Association for Medical Assistance for Travelers declared Fiji has presented evidence of ongoing Zika virus transmission. It said, there is evidence of ongoing Zika virus transmission in Fiji. Take meticulous anti-mosquito bite measures during the daytime. Pregnant travelers should postpone travel to this country. The royal couple's whirlwind tour will see Meghan and Prince Harry seek to increase their engagement with Commonwealth nations, after the prince took on the role of Commonwealth Youth Ambassador in April. The tour will focus on the recovery and rehabilitation of servicemen and women through Prince Harry's 2018 Invitus Games in Sydney. Kensington Palace said, the program across these four Commonwealth countries will focus on youth leadership, environmental and conservation efforts including the dedication of several new Queen's Commonwealth canopy projects and the recovery and rehabilitation of servicemen and women through the Invitus Games Sydney 2018. The 16-day visit will take place between Tuesday, October 16 and Wednesday, October 31st. Meghan and Harry have shown they are naturals with children on recent visits across the UK, as they are repeatedly pictured laughing and joking with their young royal fans. Three months after exchanging vows in the globally watch wedding of the century, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are starting the next big chapter in their lives starting a family. Palace insiders have confirmed recent reports that the newlyweds are expecting twins, life and style reports. Adding to the excitement, friends close to the couple are buzzing that the Duchess is pregnant with two girls. They have been busy drawing up a list of baby names, only for girls, a source tells the U.S. publication. Harry is over the moon. He'll let it slip to pals that double trouble lies ahead, the insider dished. Calling the twins miracle babies, Harry has never been happier. Meghan is thrilled to be pregnant, adds the source, noting the Duke and Duchess of Sussex had been visiting a fertility doctor. The pregnancy is in its early stages, but Meghan, 37, and Harry, 33, are already thinking ahead and narrowing down a list of names, life and style claims. Although the decision isn't final, Harry and Meghan have agreed for now that Diana and Elizabeth should be their baby's names, a source reveals. Kate Middleton and Prince William were among the first to learn of the pregnancy. As a mum of three, Kate is full of words of wisdom about what motherhood entails, says the source. She has been giving Meghan tips on what to eat and how to conceal her small bump. The source adds that Meghan is nervous about starting a family, while Harry is more worried about what happens when the girls grow up. Harry will be a protective father, says the source. Meanwhile, insiders also confirmed the exciting news to the National Enquirer.
It's amazing. Just incredible, a friend gushed to the inquirer. But they won't announce for some time, or until the end of the first trimester, as is the American custom. Another insider reportedly told the U.S. publication, all the signs have been there for months now. It's wonderful news to be sure but it shouldn't come as a shock to anyone. The Inquirer's shocking report claims 36-year-old Meghan secretly visited fertility doctors before her May 19th wedding to Prince Harry, who is sixth in the line to the British throne. Harry and Meghan wanted to get pregnant as quickly as possible after their wedding, a friend tells. They both know that as Meghan gets older, it can get increasingly harder to conceive and they are both keenly aware of her vulnerability to health complications and the chance of miscarriage the older she gets. Along with fertility checkups, Meghan also visited London-based nutritionist Melanie Brown at Kensington Palace, insiders told the Inquirer. Brown, a specialist in fertility, IFE, and pregnancy, who works out of Duke Street, gave Meghan pointers on preconceptual and pregnancy nutrition including weight loss and gain, and immune issues. Harry, 33, also reportedly stepped up, meeting with nutritionist Gabriella Peacock on how we can drop weight and boost fertility. Meghan and Harry's exciting baby news will mark the first time the monarchy has welcomed twins in almost 600 years. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex's twin joy may have been the help of his genetics. Harry's uncle, his mother Princess Diana's brother, Charles Spencer, has identical twin daughters. The royal's great-grandfather, Edmund Maurice Burke Roach, the fourth Baron Vermoy, was also an identical twin. One insider told the Inquirer, we all know where the genes for twins comes from and it wasn't the house of Windsor on Harry's side. You might romantically say this is Diana's last gift to her youngest son. Meghan Markle looks stunning in her latest ensemble and what looks like a nauticable baby bump has thrilled royal watchers. Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, has done it again with her impeccable fashion sense. The Sun reports that the 37-year-old Duchess arrived at the 100 Days de Peace Gala concert at Central Hall, London, looking utterly stunning in a bespoke royal blue dress by Jason Moore. The chic media is cinched in at the waist and features a high neck and small leg slit. Controversially, it breaks one of the Queen's style rules showing the shoulders. Tradition usually dictates that royal women don't wear off-shoulder pieces or other more revealing styles. But husband Prince Harry doesn't seem fazed by her bold choice, clutching her hand as they made their way into the venue together. The unusual ruffled design on the front of the dress sparked some speculation on social media that Markle could be showing off the beginnings of a baby bump judge for yourself. Many royal watchers on social media already seem convinced. This isn't the first time that Meghan has turned to Jason Wu for an important engagement. Back in February, she wore a sophisticated navy frock by the designer for the annual Royal Forum event and she's revisited another go-to brand for her jewel-encrusted heels. The 640 pounds, $1,100, Equitzer pumps which perfectly match her dress have an open back in a sky-high stiletto. She's holding a delicate black Dior clutch while her hair has been teased into glamorous Hollywood waves. We've seen her Burke's earrings before, and at a cool 9,000 pounds, $16,000, it's no wonder she wants to get wear out of them. The concert marked the centenary of the last 100 days of Uwe hostilities. It was held in aid of three charities Help for Heroes Combat Stress and Heads Together. Heads Together is a mental health campaign led by the Royal Foundation, in partnership with Young Minds and seven other charities. The evening included world-famous composer Sir Carl Jenkins conducting his internationally acclaimed The Armed Man, a mass for peace. General Lord Dannett, a retired senior British Army officer and member of the House of Lords was the one to greet the royal couple. Beforehand, he said, tragically, the First World War did not turn out to be the war to end war but then, as now, by marking the centenary of the end of the last 100 days of hostilities with this commemorative concert, 
we can't hope and pray for a better future. Part of that better future is helping those who have been affected by war and conflict. Earlier this week, Megan wiled in an Al Trezara suit and hit her stomach with a Stella McCartney clutch as she arrived at the World Child Awards. Supermarkets including Tesco and Asta have launched dupes of Kate and Megan's designer outfits. And they cost from £18, $32. And Megan and Kate must always have their chins parallel to the ground, an etiquette expert has revealed. This article originally appeared in The Sun and is republished here with permission. Oh, 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 oh,